Okay, so we'll get started um, at this point. People can jump in. Some very often we have people jump in a few minutes into the presentation. So let me just get myself start set up here, and we'll we'll jump off. Okay, so I'd like to welcome everybody today to the first Lunch and Learn webinar of this fall. I think there's going to be four in, t in, uh, in total this fall, so I have the distinguished honor of going first. Um, so today we're going to be speaking about enhancing your courses, your face-to-face -face courses, as well as your hybrid and online courses, uh, utilizing audio, which is something that generally doesn't, um, we don't see too much of yet in E-Class, but we'd like to see more of. Um, today's Lunch and Learn will be less presentation, more demonstration. Um, I could spend hours showing you all the cool things we could do and all the ways we could do them, so, but I'm going to try and cram as much as I can into the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour, um, just to leave you with some ideas, um, some things you could potentially implement in your own courses, uh, either now or in the future. So just a side note, um, this webinar is being recorded. Um, we put them up on YouTube almost immediately after they're recorded for people that couldn't make it today, of which there are actually about three or four that I know that just couldn't make it today, as well as for future reference, um, you know, for if anyone ever wants to view this again or refer it to somebody else, it's always up on YouTube. Uh, I will send you those links, uh, the YouTube link after this recording. And there's also a, a small guide that... Um, has been created uh, by myself, kind of going over some of the various things we will touch on today and how to do them. Uh, you're not required to speak at all or use a microphone at all in this uh, presentation. You just need to listen to my lovely voice. <laughs> and um, At the end, we will have a Q&A session where we can use the chat box to answer any questions you might have um, or just discuss anything that might come up um, during this webinar. So um, both of you have, I'm pretty sure I've met Bob. I know I've met Scott. Um, you both know me. Um, I am Nick Middlebrook. I'm the Instructional Technology Specialist here at the Mount. Um, essentially what that means is that I keep E-Class running smoothly, um, making sure everything is working as it should be. But on top of that, it's also a large part of my um, duties are finding ways of making E-Class work better for our instructors, better for our teachers, and better for our students, um, you know, how can we create a greater sense of community and improve learning through this online, ever-growing online form of education? So we'll just do a brief amount of background, um, sort of the rationale behind using audio in your courses, and then we'll jump into the meat and potatoes of this webinar, uh, more of the demonstration um, side of things. So in terms of auditory learning, um, many of you might have come across Neil Fleming's VARK model of learning styles. That was something he created in 1987. Um, I think he co-wrote that with somebody else as well. Um, if you're not sure what that stands for, um, that is the visual, auditory, read-write, or kinesthetic learning styles. Um, I have actually a very good recollection of being in high school and actually having a teacher give me one of those sort of surveys to find out, you know, what style of learner are you? Um, there's quite a bit of controversy about that model, um, as there is with any sort of educational or learning model. Um, but I do think that there is some truth to it, you know, showing that some students do have a greater ability to learn on, you know, maybe visually and through auditory means rather than through maybe kinesthetic means. Um, myself, I'm very much a visual and audio learner. Um, when it comes to other things, not so much. Uh, if you look at statistics that have been collected um, using this method, you often see there's about 20 to 30 percent of the population identifies as a total or partial audio learner. 
audio, uh, using audio in learning does support the differentiated instruction um, techniques and models that we have, you know, in, in current state of education. But it also, it does make sense. I mean, if you're traditionally, th since all but maybe the last 40, 50 years, if you were learning something, you were learning it face to face with the teacher in front of you. And most of that style was the teacher speaking to you or speaking with you or holding discussions. And even today in a traditional classroom, discussions are still, especially in college, are still a huge part of the classroom environment, of, of the learning environment that we create as teachers. Um, you lose that currently um, if you teach online or if you teach even a hybridized course where you're not seeing your students for as much face-to-face -face time as you would in a traditional course. And so something we'd like to remedy is not losing, you know, what was at one point well over half perhaps in most courses of the delivery method of information. And for if you are an audio specific learner or you rely heavily on audio in a traditional classroom, which you might not even know you are until you're not in one, you can almost be left out in a sense of a hybrid or online course. Uh, many students taking their first online courses do mention sort of just a drastic change they feel between, you know, being in a classroom and taking an online course. I mean, Scott, I know you can speak to this, um, having taught many online courses in your in your lifetime. There are many benefits of using audio in your online courses. We'll go over a few of those now. First and foremost, speaking is more accessible for many students than writing. Um, anyone that's had students recently knows that writing skills are suffering um, across the board. And while it's very important to cultivate and improve those skills, speaking is just natural for us. We're humans. We speak. Um, so that's one very basic, you know, sort of obvious reason that audio is useful. Also, in a general sense, you know, we can talk about a symphony. Uh, we can talk about a heart murmur. We can graph, diagram, discuss these things to kingdom come. But if we don't hear them, we're lacking a huge part of understanding that topic, understanding that concept. We find that some topics and activities are just better suited for audio presentation. Things like longer lectures, things like um, podcasts, if for anyone that listens to podcasts, and we will touch on, on those in a few moments. Um, <clears throat> they're all just better suited or almost created entirely in, in terms of the delivery method of audio. They can oftentimes increase student engagement. You know, students sometimes like something new. They, they like uh, having to do something they don't normally do. Sometimes they don't like that as well. But if you keep it interesting, you keep the assignments cr you create with audio, or at least enhanced with audio, interesting, you might find students just engaging more with your course material and, of course, their grades improving as a result. Uh, I mentioned briefly earlier, but things like long lectures can be recorded without the need for video. Sometimes, depending on what you're teaching or what you're trying to present, video isn't necessary or can be supplemented in the classroom later on. Any of you that you know have long commutes, myself included, and that listen to podcasts, you, you, I mean, you can learn a whole new subject listening to podcasts you know, in, in a year's worth of driving. And imagine what you could do with your course for your students in the same way. You provide things that can be listened to maybe on their commute, you know, when they're at work, when they're wherever they are. It opens up just more space for learning in non-traditional settings. It provides a greater sense of self expression for students. Um, many people like to hear the sound of their own voice. <laughs> um, I'm getting tired of hearing mine after doing all this audio stuff. but um, And oftentimes, if you think of the, the myriad of uh, ways you can use audio as an assignment, you know, you, there's, there's expression that you just can't get through text. There's, you know, vocal inflections, things like sarcasm, which we know very well does not come well through text. You know, all these things can be conveyed through audio that just are lost in other forms of communication. And lastly, um, it increases a sense of community and student identity, specifically um, in online courses, purely online courses, but also in hybrid courses to some extent. One thing we see when we survey our population, and actually the population of online learning as a whole, is that students taking online courses often feel disconnected from their classmates, disconnected from their teacher, 
And teachers also say the same thing. They sometimes feel like they're an island, you know, floating out there um, and don't really have any, you know, sense of who their students really are uh, or the kind of work, um, I'm sorry, the kind of person that they are. And sometimes, you know, that's, it's hard to teach if you don't have that information, you know, that, that sense of somebody's learning style or that sense of somebody's personality. You know, if you don't have all that, it can be more difficult to teach and more um, just hard to, in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, speak with your students, interact with your students. So just a few notes on technology that is required for adding audio or utilizing audio in your online course or your e-class course. Clearly, you need a computer or a smartphone or a tablet. You need that for just using e-class, so that should be, goes without saying. You will need a microphone, and that is pretty easy these days. Any laptop I've owned in at least the last 15 years has always had a microphone built into it. Not always the best microphone, but they're there. And all smartphones and tablets have built-in microphones, especially phones, because, hey, they're a phone. They have to have a microphone built in. Oftentimes, those smartphone and tablet microphones are very, very high-quality microphones. Um, I was doing some testing for this webinar recently, and just alone, um, my three different microphones I'm using, the one I'm using right now is a very nice desk microphone, but my cell phone had the second best audio quality of the four that I tested. Go figure. And you'll need some form of sound recording software. Uh, previously, that was sort of a major hurdle for a lot of people, um, not just here, but just across the board in online learning, but things have become much easier in the last few years. Since Windows 7, um, we're now on Windows 10, and since the beginning of OS X, Mac and PCs have built-in sound recording software. Windows has a built-in sound recorder, we'll see in a few moments, and Mac has Garage, a really robust sound recorder and editing tool, and it comes free with any version of those two operating systems. E-Class also now has a built-in audio recorder. Um, that's actually brand new, and you are the first to find out about it. Um, it's something that we just recently implemented. We're trying to just pilot it to some degree, test it out, see how it works, see if the teachers and the students utilize it and if they like it, and maybe uh, add more features in the future if it's something that is being more utilized, um, which I think it will be. There's also um, some programs like Audacity, which we'll see briefly today. Um, I could spend hours just talking about Audacity, but that is a free sound recorder or an editing piece of software. Again, for Windows or Mac, um, you might have used it before. And when it comes to editing, you do need something to edit. Um, so Audacity is very good for that. In the online sense, you have websites like SoundCloud, um, sort of what I call the YouTube for audio. And we'll take a brief look at that today as well. Um, as well as free online recorders. You can just type in, you know, free sound recorder into Google and find many websites that are happy to record your voice, give you a file to download your computer and utilize it. But really, with all the other options we have, we don't really need to use that method. Okay, so enough of the background stuff. Um, there are many ways to uh, record and upload audio to eClass. Um, like I mentioned previously, for most purposes, the built-in E-Class sound recorder, which we'll see in a few moments, is the fastest and easiest way. You don't need anything. You don't need to leave E-Class. It's just built in. Uh, but for longer lectures or any kind of recording you plan to edit um, or need to edit, perhaps, you need to use something else, um, something more robust um, as well. Also, if you are teaching at multiple um, universities or colleges, you might want to have a place to sort of centrally store all of your lecture materials, your audio materials, and, you know, so they're not just stuck on E-Class here and Blackboard at a different um, university, but someplace you can centralize them and sort of keep track of all your materials and have a backup, of course, online, you know, in case something happens to your computer. So we'll go through a couple of methods here. Um, bear with me as I jump back and forth between PowerPoint and different programs on my screen share here. So the first and sort of oldest and most simple method is the what I call direct method. This is where we basically record or download a file using one of two methods. Um, I'll show you two today. And then we just upload it um, one of two ways. And in the guide I provide at the end of this webinar, um, you will have methods in the house yourself. I'm going to jump out of my screen, my slideshow for a moment here. 
and show you what I mean. So here I've created a little test car course called Utilizing Audio in E-Class Courses. Um, and if you want, I can certainly add you to this course if you want to just sort of see how I put things together. That's perfectly fine. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm going to show you recording a sound with uh, the Windows Sound Recorder, because this is a PC I'm on, and Audacity, and how easy it is to save that file and bring it into your course in a matter of moments. So what I'll do first, a moment here. What I'll do first is I'm going to load up the Windows Sound Recorder. It's built into every um, version of Windows since Windows 7. It's this little rectangular thing here that just loaded up. And that's all there is to it. And what I could do with Sound Recorder is I click Start Recording. And right now it is recording my voice as I speak to you. And when I'm done, I click Stop Recording. It brings up a Save dialog, basically saying, where do you want me to save this? I'll save it here. I'll give it a name of Test. A little loud, sorry. I'll save it and I'm done. Now, were I to navigate to that folder I saved it to, I see my file here. And if I wanted to bring that into my course, I simply take this file, drag, and once my computer decides to cooperate, I'll try that again. Well, we will drag and drop it in just a moment. <laughs> I don't know what happened here. There we go. Okay, we're back in business. Drag and drop it. And as you can see, it uploaded it very quickly. And I now have a file called test sitting here. Another way I could record a file is using a piece of software we utilize all the time here in the Office of Online Learning called Audacity. Um, it is a free piece of software for Mac or PC. You might be familiar with it already. It's a very robust piece of software. And there's tons of self-help guides out there you can, you can read um, to sort of learn how to use this program. But again, just like the sound recorder we saw um, earlier, I can click on Record. Immediately starts recording what it hears from my microphone. You should actually see the waveform of my voice being generated as I speak on the screen here. And when I'm done, I click stop. I could replay my file. Click on record. Immediately starts recording what it hears from my microphone. If I needed to edit, say, that silence out, I could simply just select and delete things I don't want any longer in my recording. Click on record. Immediately starts recording what it hears from my microphone. And then when I'm done, I just export the audio. I give it a name. I save it. And I think it's already there. Let's see. It's already there. And then again, I have a file here that I can bring over, dragging and dropping directly into eClass. I could also add it the more traditional way by adding an activity or resource, choosing the file method, and then going about it that way as well. Um, there's no need to do that unless you want to click more. <laughs> you can just drag and drop. That's the easiest way to do it. But you do have that more traditional method of adding audio files into your course. Once an audio file is added into my course, I have essentially two options for how that audio file behaves once it's in my course. Once my page loads here, I will show you what I mean. Here we go. So I have two methods here. Um, I have two test files uploaded to this test course. One plays directly in E-Class. If I click on this, it'll load me to a page, bring me to a page where the audio file can be listened to directly in, in 1758, e the northeast corner of North America was at war two years prior. Or, if I wanted to, I could choose it to uh, the forced download method, where when I click on it, it automatically saves the file right to my computer. And with either of these methods, I could always just right-click on it, on the file, save as, and that also saves the audio file to my computer. So I have about three different ways of providing the audio files for students. I think, generally speaking, it's best to have it download to their machine. 
um, because that way if they're accessing it um, later on, they don't need to be logged into eClass, especially if they're on a mobile phone. But you know, it's up to you what you think is best or what your students prefer. And oftentimes, asking them is, is the best way. Um, let's see. Let's get back here for a moment to our presentation. We also have the new eClass built-in sound recorder method, which I'm excited to share with you guys today. Um, this can be used anywhere. A file can be attached in the HTML editor. And I'll show you what that is. It's pretty much everywhere in eClass. It allows for essentially one-touch recording and uploading of sound files. Um, there are a few caveats to it. Uh, you cannot edit the sound file. It creates a sound file for you. It uploads it to the um, assignment or the part of the course. And then that's it. If you wanted to edit it, you'd have to use an outside program like Audacity um, to edit that. And that's outside of the scope of today's webinar. But I would be happy to help you with that if you ever need help with that. And generally speaking, it is not mobile friendly. Um, it doesn't work on mobile devices yet which really isn't that big of a deal because we have another method for mobile devices that's, I think, just as simple. Um, but at some point, we, we do hope to have that functionality built in for mobile devices as well. So let me show you what I mean in terms of this new method. Here we go. So for instance, um, I mentioned a moment ago, Anywhere you see the HTML editor, you can now record directly into eClass. Um, I've created a little test form here called Use Me for Audio Testing. And if I were, say, the teacher of this course, say I want to begin a new discussion topic. I click to create a new discussion topic. I see a very familiar screen. And what I'm referring to as the HTML editor is this thing right here, this box you are very commonly typing into into eClass. Um, that's the HTML editor or the word editor, whatever you want to call it. And anytime you see this now in eClass, um, which is pretty much in any kind of assignment, um, any kind of resource for the most part, you can now directly add sound. The, how you do this, and this is also outlined in the guide I'll share, you click on the insert media icon, you click on find or upload a sound video or applet, it'll bring you to the file picker, and now on the left-hand side of your screen, we have the familiar upload a file, all those things we've used pre prior. But now you have a method to record audio. You click on that. You can type in the author's name. It defaults to your name. And then simply click on make a recording. And now my sound, my voice is being recorded as I speak to you. And when I'm done, I hit stop. I can play it back to make sure it sounded OK. Make a recording. And now my sound, my voice is, you can hear that. When I'm happy with it, I give it a name. I click Save. I click Upload. It'll show you a preview of the player. I click Insert. It'll show you the name of the file here, but it will turn into the player when I save it. And when I'm ready, I click on Post. Post a name here. I post this to the form. Confirms that it's posted. And now I see my post here. If I were to go into the post, you'll now see the audio player here. Make a recording. And now my sound, my voice is being recorded as I speak to you. Of my recording, right there. 
And of course, you could also add text to this. You could add pictures to this. Um, it doesn't have to be just audio. You can, it's just another part of what you could be typing or conveying to your students. And we'll get into this um, sort of usage in forms uh, a few minutes from now when we go through some examples of what we can do with this. But um, bear with me as I show you a couple more methods. So that's the built-in audio recorder. It's great. I think it's wonderful. And again, anywhere you see that, um, that HTML editor, you can add a recording. That even means something like labels within your resource list here. Or directly into the assignment examples topic I here have here. If I wanted to give an audio introduction to this topic, I would edit the topic and just go through that method I just showed you. And now I can record an audio introduction if I wanted to, in conjunction with anything else I'm perhaps typing or giving to my students. So that's really great. That's really robust. And I do hope you play around with it to some degree. It's super easy for students, because all they have to do is click one thing, record, and save it, and they're done. Um, and we'll get into some more examples of how we can use that uh, in a few minutes as we progress through this. Another method we have, um, we've, had, we've actually always had this method, is the smartphone or tablet upload, audio upload method. I know I mentioned moments ago that the built-in eClass recorder doesn't work with smartphones or tablets at this time. That's because it's built on Flash, and Flash is sort of a no-no uh, technology when it comes to smartphones and tablets. They just don't support it, um, thanks to Adobe. So, um, But we have some ways of doing this. Um, it's a little interesting how uh, I'm going to demo this for you today. I, I can't stream video from my smartphone. I don't have the technology to do that. But I can simulate to the best of my ability and show you sort of what it would look like. So going back to my course here, what I'm going to do is load up a simulated iPhone view here. And this is what I would see where I had to go to my course here on uh, my iPhone 6. I don't have an iPhone 6, but if I did, this is what it would look like. And say I wanted to respond to that form posting we just created. So on my iPhone, I would click on the form's name. It's going to load me into the form. I'm going to click on the post I'd like to respond to. And this method is really great for students. I click Reply. And I'll see the same editor I see on a desktop or a regular PC or Mac version of our site. I would click on the media icon, and then find or upload a sound video or applet. And then at this point, what I would see where I on a mobile device is, is going to be a little different than what I would see if I clicked it here on my machine. Uh, what we would see is something akin to this. There we go. Um, so if you're on an iOS, you get sort of that menu that pops up when you're looking to attach something. And then through there, you'd, you'd want to choose the photo or video or um, audio option if you have a built-in app for doing that, um, or a specific app, I'm sorry, for doing that. If not, the iOS's built-in app always works perfectly fine. In Android, we'll bring up the action menu. This is what I'm more familiar with. Um, your device, you know, if it's made by Samsung, if it's made by you know, Motorola, going to have different names for different apps. But you're generally looking for, say, a voice recorder or audio, a sound recorder, something like that. And there is one built into every device I've ever come across. Um, from there, you would load that app. And then within the app, you'd record. And then when you're done recording, normally it will automatically save it and attach it directly. And like I say, give it a shot sometime. You'll see how easy it is. Um, you then you would just see a file in this the file attachment window, and then you just save it, and your file has now been uploaded. Um, your audio file has been uploaded as a response to that specific uh, thread or or whatever you're doing as a student or a teacher. Um, and again, I'd be happy to walk anyone through this if they're ever looking to see how to use this particular method. Another method I'm going to gloss over briefly, but I think is really really interesting, is the SoundCloud method. Uh, I refer to SoundCloud as the YouTube for audio, and that's pretty much what it is. Uh, why would you ever want to use SoundCloud over directly recording into eClass? Well, one thing 
all the audio files you put on there are stored elsewhere, they're stored on SoundCloud servers, just like YouTube. So you can easily take them with you on the go if you teach at other universities. Um, now you have sort of a, rep a repository. Um, it's also like a way of having a backup of your files, you know, beyond just copying things to flash drives or Google Drive. And it's always, you know, it's always good to have a backup. Um, there is a three-hour limit on a free account in SoundCloud. You can only upload or record three hours of audio, which so doesn't sound like much, but that's actually quite a bit. And for a, a nominal fee, you can re increase that to unlimited. Um, you can easily have links to download it, sharing things on other platforms, these files on other platforms, commenting if you want to have your students comment on things. Um, and th there's built-in apps for all platforms, too. So for instance, were I to upload, say, the audio recording of this webinar to SoundCloud um, and say I wanted my student to listen to it, Instead of having to log into eClass and stream it via eClass or download it to their phone, they could just stream it through SoundCloud. And the SoundCloud app is much lower bandwidth, saves them on data charges. So there's a lot of benefits to using this method. Um, and it, again, it allows you to upload the files that it generates either directly by saving the file and then uploading it to eClass, like we saw a few minutes ago. Or what I think is the best part of this method is you can embed it in their own player. And I'll show you what that looks like in, in just a second. So let's jump over to SoundCloud briefly. <clears throat> and if you've used SoundCloud before, you, you know how great and just super solid their, their inter interface is. So here in SoundCloud, I've created a, an account, um, my online learning account here. And say I'm a teacher and I want to upload, my, I want to make a recording. I click on Upload here, and I say Start New Recording. And right then and there, it says, do you want to choose a file or record something directly? I want to record something directly. I tell it to allow my microphone, flash to allow my microphone to be used. And then simply I hit Record. And now as I talk, you should be seeing the um, waveform of my voice being generated on the screen there. When I'm done with my recording, I hit Stop. And just like the built-in E-Class player, I can listen to my recording. And now as I talk, you should be seen. And when I'm done, I just hit Upload. And if you've ever uploaded something to YouTube before, this is a very similar interface. I give it um, a name. I'll call it Audio Recording on Monday Afternoon. Um, a name, you can give it an image, a description, you know, the, the general things that come with uploading media to the internet. Uh, and most important thing to choose, though, you could choose a public facing file, so anybody on SoundCloud could listen potentially to this file, which you might want if you're sharing a lecture you think is beneficial, uh, but more commonly you'll click on private. Um, this makes it hidden to anyone except those you share it with, just like we do with a lot of YouTube videos here. And uh, then you have these other options here. You can enable downloads so that students can download the file if they want to listen to it somewhere else or keep it for safekeeping. Um, and then embed codes. So when I'm all done with that, I would click Save. And there's my recording. I can play it from here. And now as I can on the screen, I'm way for it. Jump around the recording if I need to. Record. Whoops. Um, it says that the track is private. I could comment, have comments on my recording if need be. You could even comment on your own recording. So if you're almost like an annotation to a lecture, or perhaps like if you need to re, uh, yeah, you know, so you you make a mistake or something, you need to just you know quickly mention you know a side note. From here, I have links to downloading this track, or I can share this track. And if you've ever embedded a YouTube video before, it's exactly the same. I go here, I get the embed code. I take that embed code, I go back to my eClass course, once I get back into my course here, um, I can embed it anywhere, again, where that HTML editor comes in. I'm just going to do a quick test embed right here on uh, webinar examples. So I'm actually embedding this SoundCloud recording directly into my topic heading, my topic outline. 
Um, this will be in a guide, the method on how to do this, but I would switch it to HTML mode, paste my code. I'm going to make it a little smaller, but you don't need to do that. Update, and now you can see the player is right there, ready to go. I save it. And now I have my recording I just made literally two minutes ago, embedded, ready to play by my students. They record. And now as I talk, you should be seen in SoundCloud. And it's back up on SoundCloud. They can download it directly from here. I can download a file. I should start in momentarily. It brings me to SoundCloud to download. Then it goes. There it goes. And it's as simple as that. Um, again, you don't need to use this at all, but I just think it's a really, really good method um, for sharing audio in your eClass course. Um, you can also just choose a file to upload. Say you record something in Audacity, and you want to just upload that exact file. You have that method as well. But I, I'm not going to go through that today because it's sort of the same as any other method of uploading. Okay. A few more things to go over. Let me get back to my PowerPoint for a moment. Okay, so for the last 10 or so minutes of me speaking, um, I want to go over some just general ideas you can utilize or develop for using audio in your course. Um, there's many more things that you know I won't have time to go over today. I'd be happy to meet with you, of course, and you know, help you develop any ideas you might have. Um, but we'll just gloss over a quick number of um, assignments that I've enhanced using audio. And then I'll open it up for questions. So going back to my course here, just getting very full of audio. <laughs> um, the first thing I would like to show you today is the audio response form. Um, this is something that actually is used at um, some other universities to pretty good success. Um, it'd be a good sort of entryway for utilizing audio in your course, I feel. So what I've done here is I've created a form. Um, and the idea is that I would want my students to respond to me using uh, audio instead of typing out their typing out their thoughts. Here I've got a student who had to say this was for a response to the reading, and they use the mobile phone uh, method, which looks you can tell because it has a slightly different player. Um, and right here, this is my response to the homework assignment. <laughs> That's a response to the homework assignment. Hopefully, they say more than that. Um, it can also be very useful for giving uh, instructions for, for um, activities as well. Uh, I have the instructions embedded right here in this player, and I also created a, a thread in this specific example where I could reiterate the instructions as well as answer any questions students might have. So you can imagine, um, especially for maybe an online-only course, you know the the power of having your students' voices that they actually be heard and be shared with the classes, which it never would have ever been before, is is a really useful um, teaching tool and can really again enhance your course, enhance your understanding of who your students are, and sort of the community of your class. Um, another good idea is the audio assignment submission. So imagine instead of submitting a paper, you want your student to submit an oral report or maybe a response to a reading, you know, under five minutes or something like that. So you would create a generic, a regular, good old fashioned assignment submission and your students, instead of uploading a file, like a, I'm sorry, a Word document or a PDF, would instead upload their voice. They could create a file and drag and drop it in or use the built-in class audio recorder and just record directly into there and make a submission via that method. Then you as a teacher would see their submissions as they come in, just like you would if they're uploading a paper. I have some test students that have submitted some audio recordings. And you could you would click to download a recording. That was taking a while to download. And then you open it, and this was a, a music file. Say maybe it was for a music a composition course. And on top of that, you could grade and, and leave comments um, as well, or upload your own audio comments if you wish to do so. 
Okay, some other ideas to share with you um, before you finish up. Um, this is one of my favorite ideas, and I really think that this is uh, beneficial, is the audio enhanced quiz method. Um, what you can do actually is create a quiz and embed audio in some or all of the questions that you wish to share with your students. For example, here I have a question. This would be suitable for maybe a history course. Here I have a question with multiple choice answers asking what date and time, I'm sorry, what date was the following speech given and by whom? So the student would listen to the speech. Well, space is there, and we're going to climb it. And the moon and the planets are there. And new hopes for knowledge and peace are there. And they would choose their response. And you've just given them a very interesting and robust question. Um, you know, in terms of just typing out the text, now you can actually hear it, excuse me, actually hear things. Um, great for music courses as well. Um, something as simple as time shape signature quizzes. So, you know, not that either of you teach music, but there's certainly all sorts of ideas you could think of that putting audio into a quiz could be very helpful. And you can even use it for randomized quizzes. You know, you could upload 15 famous speeches or something and link them to questions and every student gets, you know, four. of the 15 speeches in a randomized quiz. So it is a little bit of work, but it is very, very, I think, beneficial um, for the students to spending specifically with certain kinds of uh, topics. Two more things I want to share with you uh, before we finish up today. Um, one is an audio enhanced glossary. The glossary module in eClass, I, I feel is a bit underused. Um, I think many instructors feel as though it's something that they have to be filling out. They have to be populating with information, and that's not actually the case. Um, the glossary can be set up in such a way that students can be adding to it. Even groups of students can add to it. You can have glossaries for individual groups. Um, so that in a sense, they're creating their own sort of database of stored and shared knowledge. Um, and on top of that, it doesn't have to just be text. You know, it can be pictures. It can be audio. Here, I've created a brief, a small uh, test glossary showing three different kinds of heart murmurs. You know, I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, class, you know, we can talk about heart murmurs uh, if I'm a nursing student. Um, I could diagram them. But it, it makes a lot more sense just to hear them as well because that, in reality, that's what you're going to be listening for, right? So here, you know, I have a late systolic murmur, murmur. I have a brief diagram of it and a sound recording. You might not be able to hear this one. Give me a moment here. So I don't know if you could hear that. It was pretty quiet on my speakers, but you get the idea um, how just adding audio to even just some sort of a glossary uh, could be very beneficial in certain situations. The last thing I want to talk about today is um, this idea that some universities have started to use. And it's actually using a form as a, as a podcast delivery service. Um, what I mean by that is that as an instructor, I could create a form in my class, and instead of it being a regular discussion form, um, I make sure that my subscription mode is set to forced subscription so that all my students have to receive um, anything I post to this form. I could create a form that only me as an instructor could post to so that there isn't any discussion, any posts outside of what I'm posting. And I could upload, say, different episodes or maybe different lectures of a podcast. Um, and students could do this as well. You could have them make their own podcast series. Instead of you doing the work, let them do the work, right? Um, so you could think of how useful it would be to have sort of a you know, weekly or monthly uh, digest of you know, uploads that you or your students are making. And that can be saved and used in future classes um, or maybe even for a student bought along um, in terms of their uh, future portfolio. 
And so, for instance, I've uploaded a brief audio file here. This is podcast number one. This is a test podcast. So, right? Very elegant. <laughs> so, so, and there's so many more ideas that I, I can't touch on right now. Um, you know, using the wiki format to upload uh, things, using the database format. There's so many different modules that the audio can be added to, pretty much anything in E-Class. You can start to see how, you know, this, this method um, can really sort of grow and shine as, as you think of ways to use it over time. Okay, so just a few brief closing thoughts, and then I'll open up for any questions. Like I've said about a thousand times now, any many existing E-Class assignments can be enhanced through the use of audio. Um, it does, again, encourage multiple modes of thinking and engaging with the course material. Uh, and for a lot of students, myself included, it's very beneficial. You know, I need to keep myself interested and I need to be doing more than just one mode of, of learning. Um, there's all types of new assignments that you couldn't previously do. Um, not even things you can do in class sometimes. You know, Some things are only sort of best suited for this method of delivery. Um, and I can certainly you know, talk with you in person about those methods. One thing to note, of course, is that if you're going to start doing this, you do want to plan them in these audio assignments in advance. Students just need to know how to upload, which, of course, it's no different than uploading you know, a document file um, or something like that to a course. So there's no new, nothing new to learn. They just need to know what they're doing. And with the one-click recording method now, it, it's so simple that almost anybody could do it. You do need to plan for technology issues. You know, things get lost, things get broken, computers don't work specifically, you know, home computers sometimes, you never know what's up going on with them. Um, so have a backup plan, of course. And uh, I would say it's always a good idea to do a test assignment. If you plan to do this, you know, beginning of the year, halfway through the year, um, just create like a quick assignment submission or a form assignment where, you know, everyone just posts a test audio file so that we all know everybody is, is working. You don't want to find out the day after it's due that I recorded it, but my microphone wasn't working, that kind of thing. And what I think I always recommend to instructors using anything new on eClass, collect feedback, and as well as that, suggestions from your students. You know, if you're going to be piloting this with your class, you know, really find out what worked for them, find out what didn't work for them. And maybe they have some suggestion you, you might not have thought of to make this even a better assignment or more engaging in the future. So again, if you're interested in designing or implementing audio assignments in your course, you can always uh, call me or the Office of Online Learning and make an appointment. Um, there's a lot, a lot. I have, just did not have time to go over today. And I'm sure there's probably lots of questions you may come up with in the future. So we're here for you, as always, with all things E-Class. And we would love to get more instructors utilizing audio in their courses. So at this time, I'm going to open up the one moment here. Open up the floor for any questions you might have. Um, feel free to type them into the chat box, and I will respond to you. And again, I will upload this to YouTube by the end of the day and share that link as well as um, the PowerPoint and as well as a short guide to um, some of the methods we went over today. So you can 